Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a DIY Dollar Tree Farmhouse two-tiered tray. This is a, rec a requested video. We're going to use two picture frames, a 5x7 and an 8x10. I prefer them to be the same style. We're going to use some chipboard signs. This welcome one, if you can get your hands on it, was so nice and thick. I would definitely recommend that. Um, we're also going to use this bubble wand. That's right, you guys, the bubble wand. Um, I picked it because it's got this really cute handle top that kind of reminded me of the inspiration piece. And then we're going to use a boxed piece of art. I prefer this one because it's a really nice size that supports the bottom. But if you can't get a hold of that one, then any kind of rectangular one. And then some white spray paint. This is 97 cents at Walmart. We're also going to use glue gun with Gorilla Glue Sticks. We're going to use a scissor as well as a uh, an exacto knife or a utility knife. Now you guys know I love the utility knife from the Dollar Tree. I'm using it there. I got it in the hardware section, okay? Um, so what you want to do is you want to open up your frames and take out their backs. You are going to end up removing the glass and everything, but I'll just leave it for now. And now I want to try to find um, the best way to cut two pieces of chipboard that are the same sizes as the backing. Um, what I ended up finding was, and I'll show you guys, I think I'm going to do a side by side here. This particular sign from the Dollar Tree, this one that came out this year, is such a thick piece of chipboard that I wish I would have picked up two and used it for both trays. Um, the top one doesn't really need to be so super strong like a piece of wood, um, but definitely this bottom it's so nice for this bottom um, and what I've done is I've just laid the cardboard backing on it for the particular picture frame that I have and this particular sign they are the exact same width so I only had to cut the length down and what I did was I used my metal ruler scored it five or six times um, on the front both sides and then used the edge of the table to snap the edge off and now I'm just going to clean off whatever bit we have left over. Now it doesn't have to be pretty because it's going to get tucked inside the frame but you just want to make sure there's not extra pieces hanging off. Now for the next one we're going to use the 5x7 picture frame. We're going to repeat the same thing with this old Christmas sign that I had. Um, I actually bought it for a different project but never did that project. <laughs> um, but for this one you'll see that the width isn't the same so you definitely want to leave the pieces cut the smallest pieces at the end so you definitely want to cut the um, the big mate the majority of it off as well um, before you cut the little trimmed edges off so in the upper right hand corner you'll see that I'm actually removing the print I highly recommend this because when we going to glue the pieces together. I don't trust that it's glued to the paper, but if you want to skip the step, that's your prerogative. I just wanted to give you the idea of doing either. So now we're doing is we're going to find the center of the boards, which is pretty easy. We're just going to run a ruler from corner to corner and mark somewhere in the middle and where those two lines intersect will be the center of the board. It's really just that simple. If you've never removed paper from this, basically you peel off the top layer and then you just soak the layers underneath it. The chipboard won't get ruined um, as long as you don't leave it for three hours. <laughs> but what it'll do is remove the glue and the leftover paper. Now I'm showing you how you can find the correct circle. I've just taken the actual bubble, um, uh, the, the bubble wand and I've measured around it if you're going to do that with the pen, make sure that you keep the pen evenly close to the bubble wand, okay? But I'll show you here. What I'm going to do is, of course, we're saving the bubbles. Oh, getting all the bubbles out of the wand was the funnest part. Um, we're going to pour the bubbles into a jar and save them for, or gift them to a friend. Um, and waste not, want not. You can pour yours down the sink if you want to. And then I'm going to pull the wand out of the bubble wand. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, for this small board, I'm going to actually find the center. The bubble wand is clear, but yellow. And I'm going to find the center. And the bubbles actually made it so much easier because it created the circle that I was going to cut. It softened the chipboard more than just water would, I guess because it's soap. And it made it so much easier to cut around. But basically all you want to do is you want to take your utility knife and cut around in the circle and go as many times as you need to to get through. It seemed like a really long process, but it really, when I went to go edit the video, I realized it was not more than a few minutes. Um, 
the bubbles actually really helped, like I said, and I was able to kind of peel the chipboard apart in layers. If you don't know what chipboard is, it is basically the cardboard equivalent of uh, plywood. Um, basically, it's just layers and layers and layers, really compacted um, cardboard or craft type paper. Okay, um, so I could proceed, continue to do this with the uh, craft knife until I created the whole that I wanted. Now if the hole wasn't big enough, um, I went ahead and I inserted a scissor in the middle and spun it around just to make the hole a little bit wider and smoother. And you want to do this in increments. Um, and you just need it to be big enough to have the top of the bubble wand go through the threaded part. You don't want it to make it too big that it doesn't sit on the collar of the, of the bubble wand's threaded tube. Okay? Because we're actually going to use the collar of the, um, that's what you call like the bubble wand and then there's like a collar and then the threaded area. So you want the, we want this board to sit on the collar on that shoulders up right below that threaded area. And that's how we're going to keep the top in place. Okay, so just continue to remove, smooth out whatever pieces that you have. Use a scissor. Um, and you see there, just add a little bit more and go a little bit more. It's so much better to do this in small increments than to accidentally overcut, make the hole too big, and then have to worry about how you're going to support that top tray. All right? Um, and you'll see it's just enough. You're going to get it just enough that it's actually almost going to, I'm almost going to thread it on there, um, which is just perfect. It's exactly how you want it to be. Um, we're also going to show you the second one in the box. I'm actually going to use a tool. We always refer to this tool as a spade bit or a paddle bit, which is what we used to use it like we used to refer to it just like at home. Um, but what that will do is just another tool that we'll talk about that we'll teach you about here on the channel um, that we're going to use with our uh, cordless electric drill. And what that does is it basically creates holes up to about one inch. I have a one inch one. You can sometimes get them a little wider, but usually if there's going to be a hole bigger than that, you'll get a hole saw, which is actually looks a little bit different. If you've ever seen anybody put on a doorknob uh, for on a new door, you'll see you you'll have seen a hole saw before. But here's what my Ryobi kit looks like. Um, Jim had a Ryobi that got ruined in the flood, and Pop had a DeWalt. And when we moved here to replace both of them, we just bought a DeWalt because that's really like my favorite. Um, but the Ryobi kit, we had the drill bit stayed. So this is a, like I said, this is a one inch, what I call spade bit. Um, and it's got like a point in the middle that you put directly in the center of where you need it to be. Um, you can see it's really hard to write on this box so uh, to show up on camera. So I wanted to go ahead and I got, um, I'm going to go ahead and get that white chalk marker. So then you screw this, you know, the bit in and right at the center of where you're going to drill, you're going to put that point. Now you always want to protect your work surface, especially if you're working on a table like this. Um, but what I did was I began the hole where I had marked it on the outside because it was a lot easier to get that mark in the middle and then I turned it over and worked backwards and you could see how it eats through this chipboard like with nobody's business um, and then we're going to repeat <laughs> this is what happens if you don't hold the board um, and then we're going to repeat it with a big board um, now this hole is not quite big enough this uh, my t my bubble tube is wider than one inch but of course you're going to use the measurements for whatever bubble tube you get your hands on I was gifted a bubble tube from Walmart the other day and it was a lot shorter than this which probably would have been better except it didn't have such a nice handle on the top so um, I went ahead and I gifted that on all right but what we're just going to do is that same method with the scissor and we're going to take the scissor and we're going to make our hole bigger a little bit at a time we're also going to do it with the exacto knife so with the with the utility knife excuse me so with the utility knife i've held it at a little bit of an angle and i've cut around the entire circle and i did this on the top as well as on the inside and i did that to help me cut away just chip away some of that board 
Now, as you noticed, I didn't peel the paper off of this because it's just gonna be the base support underneath the tray. But what I'm doing here is once I fit the tube in, I'm pushing it all the way down until it touches the table. Then I'm gonna turn the box frame over and I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'm gonna mark exactly where the tube meets the underside of the frame. So now I know how much is gonna stick below. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to poke the dowel in um, through the tray, uh, through the tube, excuse me. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna support the bottom of the tray and keep the tube from coming out the hole. So I will tell you that on this particular tube from the Dollar Tree, there is a very, very, very strong, thick seam going down one side and the other side is a lot easier to poke through. So I ended up cutting through one side, poking the, the, the um, dowel through, marking the other side where I needed to cut, and then I ended up having to drill through it. So be mindful that you can cut through both sides of where you're gonna stick your dowel in. And um, I did realize just now that I didn't tell you that you needed one of these little dowels, but you could also just use an, a pencil left over or a pen, tube, anything that you have that will uh, basically go across this tube and prevent it from coming up through the tray, all right? And um, once I have that, then you're gonna go ahead and you're going to slide the box frame down onto the tube. And now we're gonna uh, take our two pieces of chipboard and we're gonna put them back in their frames. Um, oh, of course, dry fit. You always have to dry fit, Jerry. Sorry about that, guys. And now I have to take that sticker off because it's driving me crazy. Okay. Um, <laughs> you could always just turn it over. Um, so the one thing that I did notice is that there is the threaded area is way up in there. Um, and there's like an extra piece of this collar that we're going to cut off. And it cuts off so easy with the utility knife. And I will tell you that, of course, I have to do this so I can learn all the mistakes so I could teach it to you but I decided to thread it on so it would be more sturdy. Turns out that that white cap that's up there that I just showed you is not permanently glued inside that yellow handle. So we're gonna take care of that when we, wait a few minutes, It'll we'll, we'll take care of that. So now we're gonna replace the boards in the frame. I've just run a bead of glue on the inside of the frame, put the boards in and then close the clips down and then I've put an extra bead of glue on the outside where over the clips and where the board touches the frame. Now again, this is Gorilla Hot Glue Sticks. Um, this is my preference. If you want to use E6000 or any of that stuff, just have to wait for it to dry um, before you put any weight on it or spray paint it, okay? Now I'm pushing the clips down really hard because there was a lot more material in this frame than just the chipboard width. And honestly, if I had my druthers, I probably would invest a little bit more money and put two pieces of chipboard in there just to give that a little bit extra strength, okay? Now for this particular box frame and this particular uh, frame and this particular box piece of art, um, it they fit in there perfectly. So you have to really make sure that your holes are lined up really, really well. All right, and then I just added some Gorilla Hot Glue to the top of the box frame to push the um, framed chipboard back down. Um, and now I've turned it over and I'm gonna glue around the tube and all around the stick so the stick doesn't come out. But now you can see that the structure underneath it and it looks like it's really supported really, really well, okay? Now you can see why we gave it that footed bottom so that we can actually have a place to put that bottom support in. All right, and now we're gonna screw in our um, top. Now I messed up, yep, I messed up because I glued all that before I checked my top and I wanted the hole to face the long side of the tray and it didn't. So keep that in mind when you're putting yours together. And here's where I realized that they are not attached. So what I've done is I've put on a, a buttload of Gorilla Hot Glue as well as some Crazy Glue because Crazy Glue sticks plastic to plastic really well. Um, and now it really does hold. I will hold it by the handle if it's empty. The top ring, I'll hold it by the top ring if it's empty. I will not hold it by the top ring if it has anything else on it because it's just that strong. All right, and now we're gonna spray paint it. Again, this is, I was gifted this spray paint. It is Chalky Finish by Rust-Oleum um, in sort of an ivory kind of creamy white color. 
Um, I do love it. And I went ahead and I'm going to show you here how I spray painted it. I started at the bottom. Um, spray painted all the sides. Um, this is the Dollar Tree. I'm sorry. This is the Walmart's 97 set spray paint. I'm putting a sort of like a base coat on the bottom. Because you're not going to see it anyway. Um, and then I went ahead and I added the chalky finish. Because it just covers much better. Um, I had to use less of it. Let's put it that way. And it's a little windy this day. But make sure you keep the wind at your back. Okay. And and obviously go with the breeze. If the, if the breeze is like that. <laughs> yeah, definitely don't. Take your time. Okay. And you're just going to make sure you get really good coverage on this as well. I'm also spraying underneath the tray um, and making sure I get that frame because that frame is darker. Now the inspiration piece was white and had like sort of a tan frame almost like a really, really pale brown um, frame. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to give it um, a quick coat. It's nice out. Um, oh, glue strings my enemy um, it's nice out so it dries really quickly and I did end up going back and touching it up a bit because I kind of had sun blindness <laughs> so I waited I brought it inside and I found out where all the holidays were and that's it that's how it looks I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial if you do please give this video a thumbs up if you have any questions at all leave them in the comments down below don't forget to share this video with friends and family or anybody you know might be interested in learning how to make these I'm or wants to know what to do with this bubble wand and if you haven't yet um, click subscribe and when you do a little bell will pop up when you ring that bell YouTube will let you know whenever I upload a new video and if you make one of these guys I'd love to see it just share with me on any of my social medias just tag me on Facebook Facebook Messenger Instagram Twitter or you can go ahead and email me at mrsgarthb2 at gmail.com and um, as always, you take care, God bless, and we'll see you next time. Bye!